What you're about to watch contains explicit language, adult themes, violence, and may not be suitable for viewers under 18. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. Hello, people of the internet. My name is JD Shadow. And in case you are not aware, sometimes I like to post stuff about pro wrestling on this channel. And a very big story had developed over the course of the week. And it just got some more developments as of the recording of this video. Now, I want to actually talk about what exactly the situation was at first. And then I'm going to bring in my two cents because I think I might be in the minority here. And before you freak out about me being the minority, like what am I going to say? Hear me out because I think we need to take a step back and instead of doing all of these knee-jerk reactions like oh my god and like going to other people's sponsors and all this other kind of stuff. Let's take a step back and breathe for just a second because I think this shows a little bit about our society as a whole right now over issues like this and what we have to do in order to make sure that we still get our point across that some of these things are not okay while not going too far into just accept anything without due process as the truth. So, in case you were not aware of what the WWE did this past Monday and Tuesday night, they named a Women's Battle Royal at WrestleMania to coincide with the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal as the Fabulous Moolah Memorial Battle Royal. Now, I know it's going to come as a shock to some people, but I did not know about any of these allegations until the day after when I saw some of what culture's videos saying, oh, she had this or that hap going on. Apparently what is going on is that Moolah had a way with playing these hardcore politics backstage to the point where she would take women's pay that she thought belonged to her because they trained in her dojo or whatever you want to call it in her training camp whatever and not to take anything away from those other allegations which involve the whole nature of holding other women down in order for her to have a better career which we've kind of seen from some other wrestlers I mean throughout the years we've kind of forgiven them and that word forgiveness we're gonna get into that a little later but not to take anything away from that the biggest issue is the idea of sex trafficking where she sold off the female wrestlers that she trained to have abhorrent things done to them through some other people now i'm personally am just paraphrasing some of this stuff i'm just skimming through some of this stuff verbally you could probably go on google and search for her and you'll probably by now get a ton of different hits about what is exactly going on what this controversy is all about well apparently i'm in the minority of knowing what the hell she ever did because the first exposure i had to her was during the attitude era her and may young and they were doing all these comedy skits and they were doing all this stuff with vince mcmahon and i believe stephanie i'm not completely sure so that was my first exposure to her as a female talent was doing that later years during the attitude era i'm pretty sure a lot of people forgot about that but we didn't know most of the stuff back at that point in time. I think it was about 2005 and during the 2000s that news outlets began to pick up on this and began to report on it. But it was like, okay, this is just how the wrestling world was back then. And there was a lot of things that happened back then that were seen as okay and were seen as acceptable. Nowadays, we don't see them as that. And keep in mind that Phyllis Mula has passed on. I forget when she passed on, but she definitely has. So keep that in mind as well, because what is the disadvantage of a dead person to allegations like this? They don't have a chance to defend themselves. And that to me is very important and can put a bad light onto people who might want to say, hey, we need to do something about if someone was going to try to honor this person's talent in the ring. And keep in mind, I don't know one way or the other whether or not she was a good wrestler, if she drew well, if she performed well as a face or heel, I have no idea. I didn't watch any of her matches. Apparently, there's some mixed reviews about if she worked well as a face or heel. 
if she had good talent at the ring. I don't know anything about that. But what happened today, as of recording this video, is very telling because what happened was there were a bunch of reddit people and good lord reddit is in this weird spot right now from the squared circle reddit who were having a field day about this and apparently they were not alone there were a lot of people who were saying this cannot continue this cannot be and they were going to stop at nothing in order to do something about it to the point where they actively contacted the Wrestlemania sponsor Snickers, Mars Incorporated, who owns Snickers, which is the presented by the byline for the Wrestlemania event, which is going to happen next month. Now, Snickers responded to this pressure, and according to Desbin, and keep in mind Desbin was formerly owned by Gawker, and we could make video after video after video about what was going on with Gawker, and how they're still seemingly not understanding that that means that you cannot be an absolute dick cheese about what you report, because they still do that from time to time. But in this particular story, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt because it seems as though they're just reporting on this story until the very end. And I want to get to the very end when they bring up the Ultimate Warrior. Let me get to what Mars Wrigley, the parent company and Snickers said first. Because they said, quote, We were recently made aware of World Wrestling Entertainment's incorporated decisions to honor a former wrestler during the upcoming WrestleMania 34 event. As a principle-based business that has long championed creating inclusive environments that encourage and empower everyone to reach full potential this is unacceptable we are engaging with the wwe to express our disappointment now they don't exactly show at least from the quote that that's been got and put in their article it doesn't seem as though they were telling of which wrestler they were talking about or if they knew what the allegations were in the first place now the wwe followed up with another statement 90 minutes later saying quote after further consideration Consideration, we believe it is best to proceed with the name WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal. What remains most important is that this historic match is part of WWE's unwavering commitment to the women's division. Now, beforehand, several wrestlers, both past, present, and maybe future, had commented on the fabulous Mula Battle Royal itself and saying that she was a trendsetter and all of this, but then deleted their tweets afterwards when they were brought to light, when these things were brought to light. And I'm going to get to what people were saying about those people in just a second, because holy crap, I can go on for an hour about what my feelings are about how some people behaved about all of this. However, I want to condemn Deadspin about the issue concerning the Ultimate Warrior. For the love of God, can we please get off of the Ultimate Warrior being immortalized in the Warrior Award? Let me be quite honest with you, this has something to do with the forgiveness factor that we have lost in recent years due to stuff like this. Okay, Me Too movement, time's up, I get it. These are important things that we have become aware of, that we have to be concerned about. But at the same time, there is a difference between sex trafficking and going and sexually insulting somebody and saying words. Words that some people might regret and then try to redeem themselves for and they cannot because you want to keep wounds open and throw salt on them. We're bringing stuff up from 2001 where, oh, this person said this and this person said that. Stop! For God's sake, stop doing that. If someone is trying to be taught, if someone is trying to get out of being in a hate group, you don't try to condemn them by throwing them back into the wolves saying, hey, you said this back in the day, you joined that th clan back in the day, you are forever branded. This is not how we are supposed to be. We are not going to heal our country from this precipice of hatred of whatever we are in right now by condemning anybody who dares to just say one thing out of line and then say, you know what, I screwed up. If they acknowledge they screwed up, if they're acknowledging it and they're trying to make themselves better, then congratulate them for trying to make themselves better and hold them to it. Don't say, oh, well, you screwed up. You had your chance. Go the F away. Don't do that because what is that going to do? That is going to say, you know what? I don't feel appreciated. I'm going to go back to that hate group. That is exactly what you're doing. 
You're feeding the hackers for them. They are thanking you. They are on their knees for you. The Ku Klux Klan are on their knees for you. They thank you. Thank you for being abhorred yourselves because you're giving us all the ammunition we need to recruit these people because they feel like they are being ridiculed. They are feeling they are being rejected by those people who say that they are all for inclusivity. But the second that someone is trying to make themselves better, we're going to reject them because they, oh, they had their chance. Really? They had their chance. Even though they're going to make themselves better. And they're showing that they're going to try. That part is what makes me not want to be a Democrat. That makes me not want to be a progressive. Because that is the one thing that makes me want to stop and think that is not how we are supposed to be. True progressives do not do that, period. They do not reject anyone who is trying to change who is trying to make themselves better and from what i have seen the ultimate warrior has tried to make himself better so don't try to freaking condemn him for trying to make himself better for christ's sake now did he say something recently did he say something before he died that made you want to say wait a minute he hasn't changed ddp who is put up on a pedestal for his DDP yoga in fixing the lives of Scott Hall and Jake the Snake Roberts when they were down and out. You know what he said? He said, yeah, self-destruction open a warrior. They were wrong. He congratulated WWE for letting them back in. They were patching up their differences. Warrior and Vince McMahon were patching up their differences. So did Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. It seems like the Ultimate Warrior had a change of heart. He had a change. Maybe we should acknowledge that. Or better yet, well, your word, he wasn't the only one in his God blessed family. How about his kids? How about his wife? Has his wife had anything to do with what he said back in 2005 or whatever it was? No. Does that mean that somebody can't change and make themselves better and have a che teachable moment? No. That, does, that means that they can. And maybe he did. So please get off of this subject. Get off of the Warriors, whatever. Because until we hear something else that maybe means that, okay, he did something truly unforgivable, and I don't think words are completely unforgivable. You have a chance, you always have a chance to make up for what you did back in the day. Word to people who are still condemning Hulk Hogan about that word, which, by the way, he was recorded on something that he sued Gawker for, which brought Gawker into the mess that they became themselves a part of. There was a reason why Gawker is no more. And yes, I feel sorry for the people who are wearing headphones and hearing this right now. <laughs> I don't think I've ever got that animated on any subject I've ever covered on here. But anyway, back to the Falvis Moolah for a second. Because I am in a camp that says the whole thing with holding people down, whole thing with payment. Okay, it's bad. It's abhorrent. It shouldn't have been done. But how many wrestlers throughout the years have done that in one form or another? Not similar stuff the way she did but have used politics in their careers have probably did something stupid in what they did training wrestlers or whatever taking abhorrent pay cuts that's a bad business model and we've seen a lot of business people do that we've seen a lot of ceos and tycoons do that hello coke brothers we have seen so many people do that it is nothing new as a matter of fact it's still being done today maybe not in pro wrestling but it's been done in business and i'm kind of on the fence of whether or not i should condemn her completely because sometimes when you're in that situation you're trying to do what is best for your business you're trying to do what's best for your bottom line because quite frankly if your business is not making money you don't have a business now i'm not sure if she considered it a business or had a license to run that as a business i don't know much about that whole thing because i could be completely wrong but i kind of see that as something that maybe i don't know i don't know maybe that i'm completely wrong on that maybe i am i don't know but i see that throughout the years there have been several wrestlers who have done stupid stuff in their careers are still reveled as people who deserve at least a place in the hall of fame you a place immortalized hulk hogan we all know that he politics throughout the years and held people down throughout the years yet we enshrine him in the hall of fame because we understand his contribution to the business if it wasn't for him wwe would not be where it is wrestling might not be this mainstream thing it is now of course other people contributed to it but he was the one who put it on the map Shawn michaels had a 
huge, huge chip on his shoulder in 1996 to 1998. Everybody knows all about the stuff that he was accused of doing and he admitted to it. And you know what? Everybody, most people, not Jim Cornette because he holds grudges good God knows how long. But, and I respect the guy, I respect Jim Cornette. I love him talking about things, but that's the one thing about him that irks me. That he can hold grudges forever and ever and ever and doesn't seem like he's all willing to try to have a conversation to try to heal those wounds. But anyway, the whole thing is that he has a minute that, you know what, I was in a bad place, his back was mangled up, that's probably what contributed to his bad attitude. Also, he was taking, I think he was taking some kind of painkillers for that, I think it was, I'm not completely sure if that is a true thing I'm saying right now. I do know that he had a bunch of back issues at that point in time, and he was a load to work with back in the day, and not in a good way. So, we have already forgiven him, because he is admitted to it, and he has done loads to try to make up for that. He's not perfect, nobody is, but at the same time, we understand and we recognize the talent that he had. Now, whether or not certain things can be forgiven or not is left up to the beholder. I think words are just words as much as they hurt and sting. Remember that they don't hurt you physically, at least not to a extent, but the physical harm has their own situations to them. And you can go back and watch my special report about the PewDiePie and bomb thing in order to get my reaction to that and what I taught myself on the back of that. And of course, we all know about the Chris Benoit tragedy and we could go all day about the back and forth about whether or not we should enshrine him for his talents, even though we knew what he eventually ended up doing. So that having been said, I am kind of on the fence of whether or not that part of her reputation should be enough to forever condemn her because it may be more more than just what Shawn Michaels or Hulk Hogan did in the day, or it's on par with what things were back in the day or whatever else. I'm still undecided on that front, and it's not because I want to condone that sort of behavior. I don't. It's just the fact that, is it worse than anything else I've heard throughout the years? Backstage at events, not only in the WWE, but in WCW, ECW, and abroad. I don't know. I'm still trying to decide that part of it. It's the sex trafficking thing, I think, is the big problem here. I think that part of it, where you physically try to harm another person, there's where your problem lies. And that is where I have to say, we gotta be extremely careful. Look what happened with Asada Sari and the allegation that he had to fight off. Now, I'm not quite sure if that's still going on or not, but to an extent, I do believe that that is a wake-up call. Anybody who does not know the situation concerning that, Google that. You'll understand just what exactly is going on. Even the Young Turks, who are 110% behind the Me Too movement and the Time's Up movement, will say that is the one thing that might discredit everything if people use those hashtags in order to damage a person's reputation like that. Just because you had a bad date or you just don't like a person and so you're going to go to that length in order to ruin someone's reputation. That is something that a man is going to forever try to get off of his record. Even falsely accused, some people don't care. So you gotta be extremely careful when you handle accusations like that. Now, am I saying it didn't happen? No. What I'm saying is, even though these are credible people, as far as I am aware, I've been hearing that they are, we've only heard one side of the story from what I can gather. The one problem that this particular allegation has is that you don't have a person who can speak for the accused to speak up and try to defend themselves. Obviously, Mula can't do that because she's, she's dead. Unless we try to use the medium of something, John Edwards can come in and see if she'll cross over for a little bit and tell us what exactly happened that day or something. I don't know. But I don't know if there's anybody who is still alive who could tell us what exactly happened from her perspective. And that is my only real problem here with this, is that if you're going to make an accusation like that, you better be damn sure that you have all the facts before you make that accusation. Now, I'm for, okay, believe the woman. I'm for trust, but verify here. And you have to verify it. You got to. Because what happens if you're wrong? I'm not saying that anybody's wrong on this. 
but whatever you are, what if they are, you will forever tarnish a person's reputation, but do you care if you're wrong on it? That is my chief concern on that, is if you find out that the allegations are not what you originally thought they were, or okay, there is some evidence to say that something doesn't seem right, or there might be some holes in the story that's not what you remember it to be. If there's anything at all that might put something in doubt, like hard evidence or perhaps somebody's story that other people corroborate, say, hey, wait a minute, yeah, I remember it like that, then what happens to the Me Too movement, to the Time's Up movement? It does end up getting discredited because you're then believing false accusations. Are these false? Again, I don't think they are. At the same time, I feel like I would not be a person of values or morals if I did not give the accused the opportunity to have their say, to have their defense. Everybody has the right to due process in this country. And I do believe that includes somebody like Moolah, somebody like Asari, hell, even somebody like Harvey Weinstein, who is more than guilty in my estimation. Even he deserves a fair trial. So, yeah, even even dirtbags like him deserve a chance to defend themselves. And it would not be America if we didn't give them a chance to defend themselves. That's all I'm saying, is that if you don't give somebody a chance to defend themselves, then you run the risk of it just becoming hearsay. And that's probably why it got swept under the rug for all these years. Is because if the WWE doesn't hear anything from the other side, you know what? They're not going to take it seriously because you don't have the other side saying anything. And that's kind of unfair if you are going on and on and piling it on and on and nobody's there to speak for Moolah or anybody who was there at that point in time who could speak like, wait a minute, something doesn't add up here. Not condoning those acts in any sort of way. You know what I'm talking about. And that goes into my point of maybe the WWE knew more than we did. And this might be the same with the Ultimate Warrior because they did go and I think they paid for rehab for Scott Hall and then recently for Jeff Hardy. I think they were trying to make goodwill on wrestlers who have these sort of problems. I have seen recently the WWE care a little bit more about trying to get people cleaned up if they meant a lot to the business, meant a lot to their company. And I think that's true with right now with people who are seeing that they are lost. And that's why I get so animated earlier. That's why I got so animated earlier is because what happens to somebody who is lost? They're going to be readily and able to be brainwashed into thinking that the only people who they belong to is with these hate groups. And if you say, hey, there's a space on here for you, then what happens is that they feel like they don't have to develop those types of thoughts in their head because they feel like the other side accepts them and they don't have to change who they are. That's why we need to teach rather than condemn. And that's why this whole nature of society not wanting to forgive and not wanting to close wounds and just open them up and put the result on them is very troubling. That's why I don't feel like they should do anything with the Warrior Award. Because, quite frankly, doing that to the Warrior Award would paint a lot of questions I don't think the WWE is ready to answer in that front. And you'll get a lot of people angry because, once again, you flip-flopped about the Ultimate Warrior. Remember the self-destruction of the Ultimate Warrior DVD that a lot of people had issue with? We will be back there. And I don't think the WWE wants that. Okay, so what do you think about this whole mess that the WWE got themselves in? Are they justified in using the Fabulous Moolah's name? Were they right in rescinding that name? What would they name this Battle Royal after now, if anybody? We may young. Hey, you named everything else out to Mae Young as she was very contributive later on in the WWE. A lot of people adored her. Of course, if you like what you see, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I will try to figure out more ways you can support me in the coming weeks. And I will see you sometime in the future. My name is JD Shadow and as animated as I was, <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna get heat for that. That just happened.